Hi everybody, we meet again to continue discussing chapter 2 of Biology Semester 1, but this time we will be focusing on subtopic 2.2, Structures and Functions of Organelles. These are the learning objectives that you need to achieve at the end of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to explain the structure and functions of the following organelles. Nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body, lysosome, mitochondria, chloroplast, and centrioles. Let's begin. This is the nucleus. It contains cells' genetic information as it stores the DNA. Therefore, it controls cells' activities. Let's have a look at this diagram here to learn about the structure of nucleus. Nucleus is surrounded by membrane and the membrane is represented by A. It is known as the nuclear membrane. As you can see from the diagram, there is the presence of many perforations or pore on the surface of the nuclear membrane. This is represented by B. It is known as nuclear pore. Just like the matrix of the cell is known as the cytoplasm, the matrix of nucleus represented by E is known as the nucleoplasm. D refers to the unwound DNA being stored in the nucleus. The unwound DNA is known as chromatin. C refers to a region in the nucleus where the chromatin is most concentrated, and it is known as the nucleolus. Based on this diagram, you can quickly fill up your table. Let's have a look at the table one by one. A. The nuclear membrane. The nucleus is a double membrane organelle, meaning it has two membranes, as labeled here. You have this membrane and you have this membrane. This membrane faces outside of the nucleus, or in other words, it faces the cytoplasm of the cell. Meanwhile, this membrane faces the inside of the nucleus, or in other words, it faces the nucleoplasm. Based on this, Let's fill up our table. The membrane facing the cytoplasm is called outer nuclear membrane. Meanwhile, the membrane facing the nucleoplasm or inside of the nucleus is called inner nuclear membrane. As you can see in this diagram here, especially in this region here, you can quickly see that the outer nuclear membrane is continuous or connected to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. B. The nuclear pore. This refers to the perforations or pore that is present on the surface of the nuclear membrane. These channels allow substances to move in or out of the nucleus. For example, the mRNA leaving the nucleus after transcription process to be translated by ribosomes located in the cytoplasm. C. The nucleolus. The nucleolus refers to the region inside the nucleus where the unwound DNA, known as chromatin, is most concentrated. D. The chromatin. The chromatin refers to the unwound DNA scattered in the nucleoplasm. E. The nucleoplasm. It is the matrix of nucleus. This is the endoplasmic reticulum. There are two different types of endoplasmic reticulum differing in their appearance and in their functions. Type 1 is known as the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Meanwhile, type 2 is known as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. There are ribosomes attached on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, giving it rough appearance. However, there is no ribosomes attached on the surface of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, giving it smooth appearance. Ribosome synthesizes proteins. Once the proteins has been produced, the proteins will be inserted into the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, like this. As you can see, this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The pink blobs are the ribosomes reading the brown strand, the mRNA. As the message in the mRNA being read by the ribosome, polypeptide is produced and inserted into the RER lumen. Therefore, we can say that the function of rough endoplasmic reticulum 
is the site of protein synthesis. As we have learned during the discussion of nucleus, we know that the rough endoplasmic reticulum is continuous with the outer layer of the nuclear membrane. If the rough endoplasmic reticulum acts as the site of protein synthesis, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum involves in the production of lipids and carbohydrates. It also involves in the process of detoxification of drugs and poisons. In some cells, it's also responsible to store calcium. This is the ribosomes. It synthesizes proteins. It does so by reading the genetic information on the mRNA. The ribosome is made up of two subunits that will come together to form a complete ribosome. The large subunit and the small subunit. The 70S ribosome is the ribosome that can be found in the prokaryotic cells. Meanwhile, the 80S ribosome is the ribosome that can be found in eukaryotic cells. To make your learning about the next organelle, which is the Golgi body, to be more meaningful, it is important for you to know about the endomembrane system. The endomembrane system refers to a network of interconnected membranes within the cell. The membranes can be either physically connected, like the outer nuclear membrane to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or through fusions of vesicles. To help you understand, let's take a look at this diagram. The proteins that are being produced in the rough endoplasmic reticulum will be packed inside a vesicle and then transported into the Golgi apparatus. As you can see, the membrane of the vesicle actually originates as the membrane of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And when the vesicle fuses its membrane with the membrane of the Golgi body, we can say that the membrane of the Golgi apparatus and the membrane of the rough endoplasmic reticulum is connected through fusion of vesicles. As the protein moves across the Golgi apparatus, it will be modified. As it arrives at this end of the Golgi apparatus, it has finished being processed. It will then be packed inside a vesicle that will pinch off from the Golgi apparatus and transported to its destination. In this case, this protein will be secreted out. As you can see here, to release this protein out, the membrane of the vesicle needs to fuse with the plasma membrane. So therefore, we can say that the membrane of the Golgi apparatus and the plasma membrane is connected via fusion of vesicles. This animation should really help you understand how the network of membranes inside the cell are connected through fusion of vesicles. So this is the Golgi apparatus, or you can also call it Golgi body. As we have discussed earlier on, when learning about the endomembrane system, we know that the Golgi body will receive protein from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It will then modify the protein. Once the protein has finished being modified, the Golgi body will sort the protein based on their destination. It will then pack them and then transport the protein to its destination. Now let's fill up the module. Golgi body consists of a stack of flattened sacs called the cystinae. So this is one cystinae, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight cystinae. There are two phases to every Golgi body. There is cis phase that receives the incoming transport vesicle from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and also the transphase, where the modified protein are packaged inside a vesicle and transported to their respective destination. So we can say that the cis phase receives protein from the rough endoplasmic reticulum via transport vesicles. The proteins will then be transferred from one cystinae to the next and being modified. Modification of protein is done by removal of carbohydrates and addition of another carbohydrates. The transphase, however, 
packs modified proteins into vesicles and distribute it to their respective destination. The example of protein that is being processed and packed by the Golgi body includes the hydrolytic enzyme that makes up the lysosome. The lysosome performs cellular digestion that results from phagocytosis. Besides that, it is also involved in autophagy, which is the process of digestion of old and worn out organelles. This is the membrane of the vesicle, this is the lumen of the vesicle, and the vesicle contains hydrolytic enzyme that makes up the lysosome. It is known as the lysozyme. It is important to note that lysosome can only be found in animal cells. The next organelle is the centrioles. There must be a pair of centrioles and they are arranged at 90 degree angle to each other. Centrioles are involved in the formation of spindle fiber during cell division. It is also important to note that centrioles can only be found in animal cells. So when you learn to draw cell division in chapter 3, make sure that you don't draw a pair of centrioles when you're drawing a plant cell. This is the chloroplast. It is very important for students to know that chloroplast can only be found in plant cells and the cells of other producers. For example, this green algae over here. Chloroplast contains chlorophylls and it acts as the site of food production through the process of photosynthesis. Now, let's have a look at the structure of a chloroplast. Chloroplast is a double membrane organelle. It means that it has two membranes. A is the outer membrane, meanwhile B is the inner membrane. The outer membrane faces the cytoplasm of the cell. Meanwhile, the inner membrane faces the matrix of the chloroplast. The matrix of the chloroplast is represented by D in this diagram. It is called the stroma. The space separating between A, the outer membrane, and B, the inner membrane, is known as the intermembrane space. Each C is a flattened set where chlorophyll is located. As you can see here, it looks like a flat coin. Each of these flat coin is known as the thylakoid. Once many many thylakoid stack on top of each other, the whole structure will be known as a granum. Chloroplast has its own circular DNA to contain its genetic information. It also has its own ribosome to synthesize its own proteins. Therefore, chloroplast does not need to wait for instruction from the nucleus in order to replicate itself. This state is known as being semi-autonomous. This is the mitochondria. It is the site of cellular respiration where glucose is being broken down to produce ATP. Now, let's learn about the structure of mitochondria. Mitochondria is a double membrane organelle. This means that it has two membranes. A is the outer membrane. B is the inner membrane. The outer membrane faces the cytoplasm of the cell. Meanwhile, the inner membrane faces the matrix of the mitochondria. In this case, it is represented by the letter C. Now take a look at the inner membrane of the mitochondria. It folds inward, forming a structure called the cristae. The space separating A, the outer membrane, and B, the inner membrane, is called the intermembrane space. Just like the chloroplast, mitochondria has its own circular DNA. This is represented by the letter D. The DNA contains its genetic information. Besides that, mitochondria also have its own ribosomes, represented by the letter E. This is so that it can synthesize its own protein. Therefore, mitochondria does not need to wait for instruction from the nucleus in order to replicate itself. This state is known as being semi-autonomous. It is very important for students to not to think that chloroplasts in plant cells act as the substitute to mitochondria in animal cells. They, in fact, perform a completely different function. 
Chloroplast is present in plant cells and other producers. They are able to synthesize their own food through the process of photosynthesis. So we can say that chloroplast is a site of food production. And what food are we talking about? We know that photosynthesis produces glucose. Since organisms like us, humans, and other consumers does not have chloroplasts, so we cannot produce our own food, or in other words, produce our own glucose, we have to consume other organisms. This is why we eat carbohydrates such as bread and rice. After obtaining those substances high in glucose, we need to break the glucose down to produce ATP. And this is the job of mitochondria. So although plants make its own food by using chloroplasts, it will then need mitochondria to break down the food that it has produced to generate ATP.